realized that half of the people in America today were born after 1970, have no knowledge of the seminal events of the struggle. They don't understand that there was struggle and sacrifice in order to be able to achieve the things that we've achieved in America today. And so it's important that we adapt this museum in ways that will engage people viscerally, especially young people. Young people and adults now no longer want to walk through a museum and read a book on a wall. They want to be able to touch it, to feel it, to become engaged in the experience, to be immersed in it, to hear the voices of everyday people who struggled, fought, bled, and died. People who stood by the courage of their convictions to make change, even in spite of their fears. And so that's the story that we tell here at the National Civil Rights Museum. It is a powerful story because what it says to me, that even though I might be just a regular citizen, I don't have to be a Dr. King or a Rosa Parks. I can just be a regular, individual, everyday person. But I, too, have the power to make change. I, too, have the power to make a difference. Do you feel like you have made a difference in this role? I would like to hope so. When I came on board, I fell in love with this history, this story this American story. I'm a student of history, and I thought I knew it. But you know what? Even in this project of renovating, I have learned there's so much that I didn't know. For as much as I knew, there's that much more that I didn't know. So this experience is going to be a real eye-opener. And I always wanted to leave the museum better than I found it. And I really hope, and I think, that I have. I am amazed that people in other places know so much more about this history than some of us do. I am a little saddened that most of the people in Memphis, Tennessee, or many in Memphis, have never visited the National Civil Rights Museum. And I would say today that if you have never been to the National Civil Rights Museum, you're missing out and you better come. When you came into this role, obviously, you were just talking about the global awareness of this. What kind of weight did that have on you? It had tremendous weight because I realized the importance of this story. If we're not collecting, researching, preserving, and displaying this history, it would be lost forever. It's not in history books. You may learn about Rosa Parks and Dr. King, but you certainly don't know about Vivian Malone and the Little Rock Nine and the folks who integrated Memphis City Schools. You don't know that desegregation didn't just incur, occur in the South. It occurred in places all across the country. And when you come here, you can touch on Ohio and understand what happened in Ohio. You can touch on Nebraska and know what happened in Nebraska or in Missouri and know what happened to desegregate those schools in Missouri. So we are teaching a broader lesson about the civil rights movement all because the sanitation workers stood up. All because they chose to stand and be a man. And as a result of that, they got Dr. King to come to Memphis. And unfortunately, here is where he died. But we have a lot to be grateful for because at the site, I often uh, think about it as a crucifixion and a resurrection. At the site of a great crucifixion, there's been a great educational resurrection. And it is a powerful one that everyone should take advantage of. Let's talk about room 306. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you, not the president of this museum, what does it mean to Beverly? Well, as an individual, it's a very emotional experience for me. I, I can barely stand in that space and not tear up myself, no matter how many times I come, no matter how many times I walk people through that space, no matter how many times I look out at that wreath in front of room 306 and see the place where his head fell. It, it's, it's personal and it means something. It's emotional because I recognize and I think many people in Memphis felt this way, that one of the world's greatest human rights leaders travels all over the world, comes to Memphis, Tennessee, and he gets killed. So 10 years from now, you come back to the Civil Rights Museum. What would you like to see then? What would you hope to see? That is a really good question. 
Well, I would hope to see our educational programming expand beyond America. And we want to connect that message with everybody. We want to tell everybody that comes through, you too have a voice. You just need to use it. You can stand for something. You may not be a king, but you can be the best Miss Jones that you can be. You can be the best Sarah Lee that you can be. And you, by standing up, can make a difference.